Olá, temos tradução disponível em português. Baixe o aplicativo Interact no seu celular, digite a palavra-chave Nations e selecione português. Se você precisar de fones de ouvido ou tiver alguma dúvida, nos procure no Nations Café. Temos tradução disponível em espanhol. Descargue a aplicação Interactio, escreve a palavra clave Nations e seleciona o idioma espanhol. Se necessita audífonos grátis ou tiene pergunta, visite-nos no área de Nations Café. Olá, temos tradução disponível em português. Baixe o aplicativo Interact no seu celular, digite a palavra-chave Nations e selecione português. Se você precisar de fones de ouvido ou tiver alguma dúvida, nos procure no Nations Café.
Tenemos traducción disponible en español. Descargue la aplicación Interactio, escribe la palabra clave Nations y selecciona el idioma español. Si necesita audífonos gratis o tienes preguntas, visítanos en el área de Nations Café. Christianity is not just a religious system for how to live a better life. Christianity is not a set of rules for how to please God. It's not a means by which we, we get more security or we get more money or we get more success. But Christianity is a way of life that is based and founded upon the person of Jesus Christ. But a lot of people, spiritually speaking, are looking in their rearview mirror trying to drive forward with God. 
There is a peace in the center of your life that is missing today if you don't know Jesus. And he is the center peace, and he wants to complete you today. He pardons all of our iniquities. He heals all our diseases. He redeems our life from the pit. He crowns us with loving kindness. He's slow to anger, and he's rich in love. He doesn't deal with us as our sins deserve. And as far as the east is from the west, the verge of the greatest Holy Spirit evangelistic movement this world has ever seen. My friend, listen to me. When you see the enemy beginning to come after your life, do not curl up in the fetal position under the bed while the devil ravages your home. Get up in Jesus' name and fight back. Church, you want to welcome everybody that's watching online. Are you ready to worship Jesus this morning? I said, are you ready to worship Jesus this morning? I just want to remind you that Jesus is from the lion of the tribe of Judah. Judah means praise. He is the lion of the tribe of the people of praise. And so this morning, we thank you. We're not going to waste one second, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. Come on, church, let's just begin to lift our voice in this place. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, and we thank you for your presence that's already here. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you. Now, out of your mouth, just begin to lift your voice. Begin to lift your voice. We praise you, Jesus. We magnify you. We bless you. We honor you. You're worthy of all honor, glory, power, dominion, wisdom, riches, and strength be unto the name of Jesus. We glorify you, Lord. We lift you in this place, be enthroned upon the praises of your people. Even this morning in Jesus' name, can you say amen?
this gathering, it's all about you. To receive all the worship, all the praise, Jesus. May you receive the glory. Come on, church, let's just give him that glory. Jesus, you're worthy. Jesus, we praise you, God. May you receive the glory and praise God. All glory, all honor belongs to you, Jesus. Lamb that was slain, receive all the praise and all the glory. Jesus, we honor you, we honor you, we honor you in this place. It's all for your glory, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Jesus, we thank you for your presence in the midst of your church, your body, as we've gathered in your name. Lord, do a work in this place, in this house, in our lives, in our families. God, we ask you to move by your spirit. Don't leave us here the same, God. Don't leave us here the same, but challenge us. Change us, God. Move in this place in a powerful way. And right now we want to pray for Israel in the Middle East crisis. Come on church, now is the time as the body of Christ we need to stand up and we need to pray. Oh God. God, we pray right now that you would move in Israel. God, we pray right now according to your word that you would guide and protect Israel during these critical hours and days, these moments that are going by right now. Come on, somebody stir yourself up to pray. It is the, it is the hour of the church to stand and to pray. God, we pray right now for your merciful intervention in the hearts of everyone in the region. God, that you would turn and move and touch. Lord, we pray according to your word for the peace of Jerusalem. God, that you, the peace, would intervene in Israel right now and in the Middle East as the world stands at the precipice of a strategic time in history that we, the church, will rise up, O oh God, that we would be a light, O oh God, in this hour. Lord, anoint your church even now to be a voice of healing, to be a voice of peace. Lord, we pray. We pray for Israel. We pray for every family mourning. We pray for every innocent life, oh God. Jesus, be, your, be the banner over that land. Jesus, be the banner, the shalom, the peace over the Middle East in this day and hour. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. Let's just give the Lord praise one more time. Jesus, we recognize and honor you in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before you're seated, would you greet two or three people? here in the house of God this morning. Choir, God bless you. Thank you so much for leading us into the presence of the Lord worship team. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Well, good morning. If you're watching online and everyone in the house, we want to welcome you to Nations Church of Orlando. It's an honor and privilege to have you worshiping with us this morning. If you happen to be a first-time guest with us, you are honored honored visitor with us on your way out the new to nations tent we have prepared a special gift for you we love to put this into your hand please stop by at the visitor tent and we'd love to hand that with you now nations church would you greet all of our first time visitors with a great big welcome this morning now of course we are praying for israel in this strategic moment in history it's been on all of our hearts to pray for the crisis in the Middle East. You can't watch the news, you can't watch TV without your heart being broken for what is happening over there. And we have an obligation, not only as a congregation, as Nations Church, but as the body of Christ to gather and to pray at this moment. The Lord spoke to my heart about one week ago 
to begin to gather the churches together to pray. So this Monday night, we've called a prayer meeting uh, tomorrow, October 16th at 6.30 p.m. We're going to be hosting a, a multi-church prayer meeting. We're going to be meeting at Christ Church of Orlando. That's on Orange Avenue. And I really want to encourage you, if you can at all make it tomorrow night, we're going to be praying for that entire region, praying for peace, amen, in Jesus' name. And we'd love for you to join us. If you know people that really have a heart for Israel and a heart for the Middle East and a heart for this right now, would you help me get the word out about the prayer meeting tomorrow night? And everybody said, amen. Help me welcome Joe Turnbull to the stage. Hallelujah. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the U.S. Outreach Director for Christ for All Nations and the Nation's Outreach Coordinator. And as Pastor Russ said, when you turn on the news, you might think we're in a season of war, season of famine, season of politics. But I'm here to tell you one thing that the church is always, see what season they're always in, and that's harvest season. I said that's harvest season. Until the end of the age, we'll be harvesting, and I'm here to tell you that a great harvest has begun in the United States of America. How many people know America needs Jesus like never before? Me and a team, we just drove a convoy. My, my good friend Mick Smith, we led RVs. We have stage trailers. We have sound equipment. We're going across the nation from city to city to lift up Jesus across this land one more time. And we just got back from Virginia Beach. Those of you who know have been following the story. We've been there for the past year. We've connected with over 250 pastors. We've done over 40 evangelism trainings and three gospel campaigns. And the last gospel campaign that we just had, we ended up in Virginia Beach, right on the sand and the shores. And what's so special about this part is that's where William Hunt, the first missionary ever to America, came. He planted a cross. He fasted and prayed for three days that this would be a Christian nation and that that missionaries would go across the city. And I'm here to tell you, because of evangelist Daniel Klinda's vision, because of the boot camp and evangelist Levi Lutz, we have trained up and raised up evangelists now that are in cities in Louisiana, cities in Georgia, cities in Florida, cities in Detroit, and we're going to take the gospel to the nation. And I have a video to, sh video to show you how thousands gathered upon that beach and how we lifted up Jesus and many people were saved, delivered, healed. And I'm here to tell you, and the words of Reinhard Bunke, America shall be saved. Check out this video. Tonight is not only your individual breakthrough, but it's your family's breakthrough. It's Virginia Beach's breakthrough. I'm here to tell you that America needs a breakthrough. Go to the one at whose name every demon trembles and every knee bows, the wonderful name of Jesus. Can you say amen? I'm here to tell you tonight, if there's darkness in your family, if there's darkness in your life, Jesus Christ is here, the light of the world, to push out all the darkness. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Jesus has come to break your chains, to break the bars, to break the prison cell, to pull you out of that box and to set you free. Say amen. Praise God. Listen, church, I'm here to tell you God is doing amazing things all around the world, not only here in America, but all over the world. We've got over 1,700 trained evangelists that are preaching the gospel literally around the globe as we speak. We've got teams uh, that are wrapping up a crusade in Kenya right now. There are teams that are just arriving in Guinea-Bissau, literally, uh, like as we speak, today and tomorrow, they're arriving. But I wanna share with you this testimony that came out of Kenya. This is gonna blow your mind. Are you guys ready for this? Yes. this? I'm just gonna read it straight off the page, like how it was submitted. This is from Jamoke, who is in Kenya. A Muslim woman got saved at the conference and her husband saw her come forward and how she was celebrating her freedom in dance on live TV. Her husband was the son of an imam and was waiting, for, with, sorry, was waiting for her with a butcher knife to slay her when she got home. When she arrived home, he put the knife to her throat and she cried out the name of Jesus and he fell backwards and passed out. When he came to himself, he said, I wanna go out and meet the pastor from that church. When the husband got to the pastor's office, he told the pastor, 
that he wanted to become a Christian. The pastor called the evangelism team to pray for him to receive salvation, and Muhammad, his name was Muhammad, demanded that he be baptized immediately, even though it was 11 p.m. at night. The pastor then asked the evangelism team to rename him, and his name was changed from Muhammad to Simon Peter, and then they baptized him. Come on, give it up for Jesus. Isn't that amazing, guys? It's like right out of the book of Acts, but it's happening today through your family, your friends, the people that share the DNA of the room that we're in right now, Nations Church, Christ for All Nations. I wanna tell you guys, as of yesterday, this is a historic moment, as of yesterday, in the lifetime of Christ for All Nations, we have officially surpassed the landmark of 89 million documented decisions for Christ. Come on. And even in the last seven days, I want you to say seven days. In the last seven days, three people in Bulgaria gave their life to Christ. Five people in Estonia. 11 in the Cayman Islands, 163 in the United States, 221 in Zambia, 2,173 in Argentina, 2,220 in India, 7,655 in South Africa, and 99,483 in Kenya. For a grand total in the past seven days of 111,934, documented decisions for Christ. Come on, church, can you give it up for Jesus? Hallelujah. How many of you know Jesus is still the same yesterday, today, and forever? He is still healing, he is still saving, he is still delivering. I have with me this morning, uh, Jasmine. She's going to go ahead and share with us what God is doing, not only all over the nations. How many of you know that this church is impacting not only the neighborhoods of Orlando, but also across the nations of the world? But we have a uh, small group. Uh, Jasmine's going to go ahead and share what Jesus is doing in her small group. ¿Qué está haciendo Jesús en tu grupo eh, pequeño? Muchísimo. <laughs> God is doing great things and beautiful miracles in our group. My group is Abigail's Arise. Um, it's about Abigail, a beautiful, intelligent woman that knew how to go before the Lord, uh, before the king, to save her household. And we are dedicated to empowering and equipping women who are struggling in their marriages um, to bring back their husbands, to bring back their marriages to the kingdom of God. And so God, yay! <laughs> and so God is giving us um, strategic tools, specific tools and strategic um, things that we need to do to go before him, to take them back for him. And there's one testimony that I'd like to share. Um, one of my girls is here, Yara, and she gave me permission. Um, she's been in the Lord for five years, and for a couple of years now, her husband has kind of strayed, and um, she's been struggling a lot with that. Um, we've been giving her tools and things that, you know, we, we demonstrate the word too. So um, they take these things and they go home and they implement them. And she's seen her husband since, you know, I don't know how many, a couple of years now, hasn't even prayed to the Lord, begin to pray over her, praise her, thank her for being his wife, loving on her. He came on the group um, last week on Zoom. And he came on there just to thank the women of the group for praying for him, for praying for the marriages, for praying for the women, for teaching the women. So God is moving big time. I have a lot of girls that have, you know, a lot of testimonies. But Yara said, you know, I don't know what God is doing, but he is doing something miraculous. I can't even explain what he's doing, but he's doing something huge. And um, she's just blessed by the group. So if you guys have not signed up for any any group, look them up. There is one that's right for you, so sign up because God is moving. God is changing lives in our groups. Amen. Thank you so much, Jasmine. How many of you give it up for Jesus? Amen. What he's doing in and through this amazing church. We're going to go to get prepared for our tithe and our offerings. Any cheerful givers here this morning? We're so grateful and thankful for what Jesus is doing. As you prepare your gift this morning, we have several ways to give, but I'm going to go and share a quick verse with you. First of Chronicles chapter 21, verse 14, and it says this, but who am I and who are my people 
that we should be able to give as generously as this for everything. Can everyone say everything? everything. For everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your own hand. Just to put a little bit of, a, of context here, David, they're building the temple. People of Israel is coming together. They're going ahead and preparing offerings. They're bringing their contributions. They're bringing their gifts to God. And this is David's prayer as they're bringing everything over. David's prayer is this. He says, who am I, God, and who is your people? How many of you know that there's nothing like the grace of God? Amen. It's because of his grace that we are here today. It's because his grace reached out to us. It is because of his grace that we are who we are today. And you see, church, your giving has a purpose. And in that purpose, your giving goes ahead and enables us to go out into the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ so that lives may be changed, so that families may be changed, so that their line and their families after their family, that their generations after their generations will be changed and impacted by the power of God. But I love what David goes on and says next, and it gives us a glimpse of what really giving is all about. He goes on and he says, God... We just come to give you what you've given us in our hand. You see, church, we have two options. How many, has God been good to you? <laughs> come on. The Bible says, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. And David is saying this. He's saying, God, we're just coming to give you what you've given us in our hand. You see, church, we can either lay our hands, stay open. Or we can go ahead and close it. But what may, we, may we be a church that we are open-handed. May we be a church that says, God, I recognize that you've blessed me. I've recognized that I am where I am because of you. I've recognized that you've given me that business. I recognize that it's you that's given me the promotion. I recognize that you've given me your favor. And therefore, God, everything that I receive, I give to you. Can I encourage you, church, that when you leave your open hand, God will never stop blessing you. You see, it's when you close it that you're not able to receive what God has for you. The Bible says this, give, and that shall be given unto you. Let us be an open-handed people, amen? We have several ways to give. You can give online. You can go ahead and give, text Nation Give. You can give by check, Venmo, Zelle, Cash App, or you can also set up um, recurring um, giving on our app. For those of you who are online, you can go ahead and you can join us as we say, God, we give you what you've given us. I'm going to go ahead and ask you all to stand up this morning as we declare this declaration as we give today. Is God faithful, church? We ready? One, two, three. As I give today... I declare God's supernatural blessing over my life, my family, and nation's church. Because of my obedience to give biblically, I will see abundant increases, increases, jobs, raises, and bonuses. I trust the Lord for promotions, sales, contracts, and awards. I will receive unexpected blessings, check in the mail, and lost things found. All of my needs will be met, and I will have more than enough. I will be a conduit of blessing for the kingdom and the harvest in Jesus' name. And all the church said, amen and amen. Let's give God a hand of praise this morning, church. As you give this morning, church, a couple of announcements. We will have a candy corn Sunday on October the 29th. That's going to be with Nations Kids. There's going to be prizes, games. Go ahead and mark your calendars for that. Growth track week number three is today. I will go ahead and see you out in the cafeteria. If you want to get connected and you want to see and go ahead and use what God has given you so that you can serve, so you can play a part of what God is doing here in this church, I invite you to growth track. This is week number three. You'll be able to meet our dream team leaders there so that you can go ahead and get connected. And our last announcement here this morning, Women's Ministries having a fellowship and fun event on October the 28th, starting at 10 a.m. in our Oak Ridge campus. You can go ahead and register through that, through texting, Nations Event to 94,000. God bless you this morning, church. Thank you, Pastor Harry. Well, church, we live in the most critical time in the history of the world. 
a time of prophetic fulfillment happening right in front of us. It's so easy to see the enemy's on the move, but good news is God is on the move as well. That revival is sweeping the land and God is gonna be victorious in these last days. And I'm so honored and privileged this morning that our special guest this morning is a man of revival. He is a man of the Holy Ghost that is shaking Europe with the gospel of Jesus Christ and revival. He's a dear friend of, of Pastor Daniel and myself now for many years. He's the president of International Association of Healing Ministries. He's the prime vision carrier for Europe shall be saved. He's the co-chair of the GEA, GEA, the Global Evangelist Alliance. And again, a dear friend all the way from Switzerland. Would you stand to your feet and help me welcome Jean-Luc Chascal. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Before you take your seat, just stay on your, on your feet. I'm sorry. You can just imagine or hear with my accent, I'm not American. I'm coming from Europe, speaking French, but it's my great honor to be here. Before I will release the Word of God, I really feel strongly that the Lord wants to heal some people. I had the privilege uh, years ago to spend time with, many times actually, with Dr. Oral Roberts, who really influenced my life. And I remember once a guy came, actually a famous pastor came to him and he said, how can I be more effective in my ministry, Dr. Roberts? And Oral just look at him and reply, preach shorter and minister longer. So today I want to minister a little bit longer than the time that is given to me. If you are sick this morning, I want you to lift up your hands. And by the way, before I forget, because I want to honor those who prepare that, uh, they brought that, this book that I just wrote, uh, Moving in Miracles and Healing, forward by Bill Johnson, indoors by Daniel Colenda and many, uh, including uh, Nathan Morris, my dear friend. I'm so happy to see his beautiful wife here today. And I wrote this book uh, by more, th more than 30 years of healing ministries. Uh, I released the practical things. Everything I know about healing, I put it on this book, uh, including revelation that I received from other people who are already with the Lord, like Reinhardt. Uh, Reinhardt was a very close friend of mine and helped me a lot about healing. So you can find this book uh, at the end. But the most important things, uh, if you are sick right now, I invite you just to lift up your hands. Uh, and as I wrote in this book, I connect myself right now to Jehovah Rapha, God the healer. And I stand in this unshakable ground foundation where the Lord Jesus pay everything. And through the stripes of Jesus, there is healing right now on this place or for those who are watching at home. And now by faith through the Holy Spirit, I go to this supernatural experience, supernatural place to release the healing presence, the healing power. I feel very strongly as we're going to sing this beautiful song, the Lord will do miracles. Uh, one of the things we just experienced last week, it's an increase of the miracle power, like creative miracles, uh, but also regarding tumors, cancers. Uh, uh, just a few weeks ago, I was to a place uh, and I saw a man. I said, there is somebody behind the camera who has a brain tumor. And nobody was moving. It was actually in a big tent uh, and uh, with the light we couldn't see. And I say, I see it. I see in the spirit. Uh, and the Lord wants to heal this person. Uh, and nobody was moving. Finally, I took, I went by myself. Uh, I arrived behind the camera. It was right on the back. Uh, and I say, who is this person behind the camera? And nobody was reacting and suddenly I saw a man laying on the floor and I say who is this man on the floor and uh, they tried to communicate they couldn't communicate I say who brought this man and suddenly a lady came running say I was at the hospital today discovering this man he has a brain tumor he is deaf he can no more hear because of the brain tumors uh, and I brought him expecting the Lord could touch him I pray for him with these gifts of miracles. Uh, 
the tumor disappeared instantly. He started to hear. The good news is, he went back to the hospital. They did all the tests and they discovered that they had no more tumor. He was able to think again correctly. A few weeks ago, he started again his job and he's in perfect health. Why I'm sharing this testimony? It's because we have entered a new era of the miracles and the healing power. And it's here this morning. If you are sick, in the name of Jesus, I command every pain, every disease to leave this place in the name of Jesus Christ. And I see in the spirit, many people have growth, tumors, or kind of kissed that the Lord wants to remove right now in the name of Jesus. I see actually the light just coming from heaven in this place on the seven row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven row. There is somebody here. You have a growth. The Lord wants to remove it. If it's you, lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands. A growth, a growth, a growth. Who is this person? Right now, not by mind, not by power, but with the gift that the Lord gave me to make surgery in the spirit. I remove this growth right now. And what you've done for this man in Wales, do it for this precious sister in Jesus' name. Many growth, many kiss are leaving this place in Jesus' name. I command every tumor, every kiss to disappear this place in the name of Jesus. Lady, be healed and be free right now. There is somebody who has a kiss on the ovarian. The Lord is removing that right, right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody has, I'm not sure it's a tumor, but I see like it's a endurance. I'm not sure about the word in English, but I see like endurance or kind of gross or kissed to your shoulder and you have difficulties to move it. The Lord is just removing that there. Where is this person? In Jesus' name, not by mind, not by power. I command this endurance, this gross, this kiss, whatever is the name, to be removed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Right now, in Jesus' name. Somebody, so strange, is not a healing service, but when Jesus is in the place, there is always healing. So he is here, the master, he is here. Somebody has a kind of growth behind the eyes. I don't know what it is, but right now, no, by man, where is this person? Just there. You have a growth behind the eyes, behind the globe of the eyes, and it's bring you trouble to see it properly if it's you lift up right now your hands uh, and no by mind no by power i remove this growth right now and i release the power of the holy spirit uh, now because of a lack of time if you are sick whatever is your sicknesses uh, i don't have to go for the words of knowledge uh, i invite you to put your hands on the place where you have pain where you need the miracles uh, and as you put your own hands uh, between your needs my faith and god's power something will happen right now so right now as you put your hands on the place uh, I command in the name of Jesus every pain to leave your body, every infection to leave this place. In Jesus' name, heart disease be healed. In Jesus' name, stomach, intestine be restored by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, spirit of paralysis, leave this place. I may the Holy Spirit move in power to reveal you, Jesus the healer, right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. Before you take the seat, I see the Lord is just making a surgery of somebody like the, uh, uh, oh, I forget the name, the tunnel carpia in French, the carpet, carpal, you get it. Uh, somebody has that and it's also connected uh, with the growth. Uh, right now the Lord is 
doing this surgery to you in Jesus name be healed right now be healed in Jesus name can we give a big clap to Jesus our healer he is here today he is here and if you are at home be healed in the name of Jesus be healed and be healed hallelujah 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 you can take your seat thank you so much for the worship team it's really a privilege for me to be here in this house I just feel very hot here I don't know if it seems like we are in Africa I love Florida very much I love this place thank you so much sir it's really an honor for me to be here I feel really at home uh, Reinhard Bonnke was for me really a dad for many years uh, close friends, uh, good, uh, I mean a mentor, he helped me to start the ministry and for all these years when he arrived with uh, Daniel as the successor, I was so excited to meet Daniel and in front of Daniel and Reinhardt, I said, Reinhardt, everything I've done for you, I will do it for Daniel, I will serve him because he has been appointed from the Lord, he's my brother and I'm so encouraged and so proud of Daniel, the way he's leading this ministry. Despite the challenges, the wars you have been passing through, he's an amazing general and I want really to honor him. And you need to pray for him, his wife and the leaders. And of course, thanks so, so much, Russ and all the team for having me to this beautiful church. It's really an honor and a privilege for me. Today, I want to share with you a word that I received from the Lord. It's very, very strange. I share that to the first service. Uh, when I go to preach to places, I don't go to my notes to take the old preaching. I want fresh bread because I do believe the Lord wants to give us our daily bread, not the rotten bread, the fresh bread. You know, I'm living in Europe. And especially in France, they have this beautiful fresh baguette. Who have been already in France? Oh, you need to go over there. And they have the best bread in the world. And uh, it's fresh and it smells so good. And I do believe the Lord wants to do the same for us by giving us the daily bread. Uh, so today, I want you to open the Bible to 1 King 18. And we're going to read the, cha the verse 42 to 46. Uh, also, I want just to honor Nation Church. Uh, I'm traveling around the world. Uh, I don't know a single church uh, who is celebrating the souls who have been saved during the week. Uh, congratulations for showing a model for the global church. Uh, we should follow this example. So may the Lord bless you for your beautiful mandate. Uh, First King, uh, chapter 18, verse 42 to 46. So Ahab went to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel and bowed low to the ground and prayed with his face between his knees. Then he said to his servant, go and look out toward the sea. The servant went and, went and looked, then returned to Elijah and said, I didn't see anything. Seven times Elijah told him to go and to look. I feel the Lord saying that today, to go and to look. Finally, the seventh time his servant told him, I saw a little cloud about the size of man's hand rising from the sea. Then Elijah shouted, Hurry to Ahab and tell him, climb you into your chariot and go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. And soon the sky was black with clouds. A heavy wind brought a terrific rainstorm. And Ahab left quickly for Jezreel. Then the Lord gave special strength to Elijah. He tucked his cloak and his belt and ran ahead of Ahab's chariot all the way to the entrance of Jezreel. 
Lord God, thank you because you are here today. Thanks for the season we are living in. It's historic and we don't want to miss what you are willing to do. That's the reason, Holy Spirit, I welcome you. You are my best friend and you are as well the spirit of revival. I pray that you may come today, not only with your presence and your power, neither just with the spirit of revival, but also with the spirit to teach us to bring us that great deep things coming from the word of God and the kingdom of God in Jesus name I break every demonic spirit every mindset that rose that rise again the knowledge of God I've not done to the first service and I do that very not often but I break this religious spirit who want to put the Holy Spirit in the box in Jesus name we submit our spirit to the Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit take the lead of this meeting but more of all take the lead of our lives and ministries so we can see what the Lord has prepared for today in Jesus name amen and amen uh, hallelujah I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit for years we have been hearing, praying, waiting, and prophesying about revival. What's revival? Oh, there are so many books, studies, uh, many explanations. Uh, let me just bring my simple understanding, and I will make it as a resume, because there is many things that we can say about revival. But the spiritual revival is when God acts in a new and fresh way with unusual breath, a walk of the Holy Spirit that grips people in a supernatural way and allows God's walk to expand in a way that no ministry can do on its own. And the beginning or particle sign of this revival is by reaching people who don't know Christ and who are seized by God, repenting of their sin and putting God first. The first revival that has happened, it's on the day of Pentecost. Jesus had gone to heaven and they were waiting for the promise he had made them to go to the upper room and wait to the Holy Spirit. They were united in prayer. I, by the way, I congratulate this church who organized this uniting prayer tomorrow night because that's a very important key for what the Lord wants to do today. The time is over to fight between churches and denomination. It's the time to come together to reach this wonderful harvest that is in front of us. And as they were together in unity, in prayer, not soaking, but in prayer, suddenly a mighty rushing wind came over them. Flames of fire appeared to each head who were there. And the gospel was preached by a boldly man called Peter. And 3,000 people get saved on that day. And from that place, they went from cities, places to preach the gospel. And it's not only God moving, it was not only God who was moving, but it was God in partnership with people who say yes to the Lord. And that's what the Lord will do. It's not going to be a cloud, we're going to fail on the place. Only it's going to be God moving, but he's going to use you as a partner to bring revival to this generation. May somebody say hallelujah. And this kind of outpouring of the Holy Spirit uh, has taken place throughout history in different forms. Uh, through the preaching of man and woman uh, like Finney, Finney or Wesley. But one of the stories that I like and that influenced the whole world, uh, it's of course Azusa Street. Uh, on the night of April 9, 1906, uh, William Seymour and seven men were waiting on God on Bonnie Bray Street. For those who've never been there, you need to go. It's a very small house. And when they were on their knees waiting for the Lord, 
suddenly as though he bit a bolt of lightning they were knocked from the chairs to the floor and the other seven men began to speak in tongues and shout out loud praising God the news quickly spread the city was stirred crowds gathered services were moved outside the accommodated the, to accommodate the crowds who came from all around the world people fell down as they approached and attributed to God people were baptized in the Holy Spirit and the sick were said to be healed few days later in connection of this revival in Wales one of the darkest place where it was a tragedy in this place a little group of people not thousand not big church but little hungry and thirsty young people that's one of the things we see today and i know if you are here it's because you are hungry and thirsty this little group young teenager they were there praying seeking the lord asking for revival and the pastor say who could give a testimony to the lord nobody stood to share the testimony except a little girl a young girl of 18 years old her name is flory evans she stood up and she said the most simple words but powerful word that brought revival to wales she stood on her feet and she said i love jesus with all my heart and the holy spirit came over these young people and they went with this fire of the holy spirit preaching the gospel among them was even roberts and in less than 18 months a hundred thousand people got saved for the first time other revival happened toronto pensacola and others even some of you have been touched by these revivals but I came from Switzerland, my friends, with the good news that something similar has started again. It looked like revival. It smelled like revival. And I believe it's the beginning of the greatest revival in the history. May somebody say hallelujah. But it started in a small way. And the small beginning looks like the fulfillment in front of our eyes of the prophetic word given by El the prophet Isaiah in the chapter 60. Darkness invading the planet Earth like never before. But at the same time, the glory of God rising in the midst of earthquake, wars, demonic things in our schools and societies, including persecution. My friend, I came here to tell you, we truly have entered into a new era. And I have a good news. That's the reason I came from the other part of the world. I came here to tell you that I see what Elijah's servant saw. I see a small cloud to the, sh the shape of a man's palm. And this cloud seems little. And but it looks little because it's still far away. But I can tell you, my friend, God is breathing on this little cloud. And the breath of God is not a little puff of air. This is the mighty rushing wind that came on the day of Pentecost. Is this mighty rushing wind who is behind this little cloud. And the good news is, this little cloud is coming on your direction in Jesus' name. Yeah. My friend, the cloud of revival is coming in this direction. I say it again. I see this little cloud coming in your direction. Here in Florida, here in your family, here in this country of America. And that's the reason today I can shout boldly, America shall be saved in Jesus' name. You are living in Florida. You know what it means when you have an alert when there is a tornado or hurricane. You don't stay like that waiting that it's come. You do something. Spiritual is the same. You have to do something because it's coming as clear as I see you, as clear it's going to come. And like Elijah shouted to Ahab to hurry, I'm telling you the same. 
climb into your chariot and go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. In Jesus' name. I said that before, but I feel to say it again. For my friends who are called for Australia, I can tell you I've been there. It's a desert wilderness place, a beautiful continent, but it is ready for revival in Australia. So my friend, don't wait. Go climb your chariot, because if you don't go, you're going to get stopped by the rain. The Lord is moving in a mighty way. And I have, a, I have to tell you, this little cloud that I see today in the shape of a man's palm, it's a huge cloud filled with the glory of God. And it's going to release an unprecedented, abundant rain to water your life, to water this church, but above all, this country and the nations of the world. But I know also on this cloud, as I can see this cloud, is not just the glory of the Lord, but it's a, it's a cloud full of a liquid of fire for the revival of the nations. Uh, and you, friends, uh, as a ministry called Christ for All Nations, uh, as a church called Nation Church, uh, you are connected directly to what the Lord wants to do. He wants to use you for revival in the nations of the world. And the doubled harvest is not going to be just for the 50 cities for the harvest, but the 50 cities is going to be a place of revival in Jesus' name. Fire, liquid fire will come out of this place and it will bring revival to these different countries. If you believe so, say hallelujah. As I'm traveling around the world, I have the privilege to see what the Lord is doing. In many places, something is happening, including to my little village in Switzerland. We've never seen that, never experienced that. Place is overpacked, people giving their life every Sunday, every time we meet. People getting healed in a wonderful way. It's beautiful what the Lord is doing. And when I was in the beginning of the year in Melbourne, Australia, I was preaching to this beautiful church carrying the spirit of revival. I was on the floor seeking the Lord and the Lord spoke to me to start a revival school to prepare the church. I said, Lord, I'm full. I don't have time for other projects. He said, it's vital. There is the wind and the wind is bringing this cloud of revival. You need to teach the church to honor the small beginnings. You need to teach the church to recognize what I'm going to do and to tell to the church not to go for an expectation and to or to welcome or to expect something different than what I'm going to do. Because that's what the Lord said. In the past, he already wanted to send revival. But many of us, we didn't recognize the small beginning. And we started to curse what the Lord started. Because it was behind our mind. The Lord is doing something new. And this something new is beautiful. Now we need to honor it. As I was coming back home, the Lord said, go to visit Gary Keller. Gary Keller is a father in Switzerland for the nation of Switzerland. Uh, and I say, what, uh, why I need to go there? He said, because you, if you want the blessing, you need to go now. I'm going to call him to heaven. But also he has a word for you. I call Lilo, his wife. I say, Lilo, I want to come because I feel the Lord told me that Gary will soon go to heaven. To make the long story short, I arrived to the house. The glory of God was in this place. And then I said, Gary, tell me, tell me what you have to tell me. I said, well, I've been a few times this last month to heaven. I said, that's beautiful, but what have you seen? The most important things that I need to hear. And then he started to cry. He said, he say, I saw the Lord no more sitting on the throne, but up on his feet ready to come back. But before that, he was holding a jar, a beautiful jar with a special reserve of a liquid fire. And this liquid fire, he is starting right now to pour out to the nations of the world. I said, Gary, what we should do? What do we need to do? He said, tell the church to be like Simeon, 
to honor the baby, like Simon honor baby Jesus. He was a baby. He was not the big Jesus. He was a baby making trouble to the family, waking them up during the night, probably pooping as well. He was a baby. He needed to get feed that he can grow and increase. But because they honored the baby, the baby grew up and he arrived to the full, wonderful Lord Jesus, who is the Savior of the Lord. <laughs> Say the same things. The church needs to honor the small beginning, the small baby, taking care of it. And then he will grow and he will arrive to a full maturity. And that's the reason I started this school in Paris. I wanted to do it in Switzerland, I can tell you. It would have been much easier. I have the buildings. My staff is over there. They all say, no, I want you to do that in the city of light called Paris. It took me a lot of energy, but we started last Saturday. You have no idea, my friend. And I say that with a humble heart. I'm not the center of the world. And it's not the only things that the Lord is using today. I can tell you. But one thing is sure. Few hours before we start, Lauren Cunningham went to the Lord. The only man that I know who went to every nation of the world to preach the gospel. I can tell you, there is a mantle who is here, available for those who want to see revival in the nations. By faith, we take it. And we're going to bring together the gospel to the nations of the world. And we're going to see everyone hearing that Jesus is alive. Same day as we are about to start, the war started in, in uh, Israel. And it's not just a war, my friend. I pray that it's not a third world war, but it's a serious battle. It's a serious thing. So when pastor invites you to pray, you should all go to this prayer meeting. Because it's about all of us. It's not just about Israel. It's about what the Lord is willing to do. I want to ask the worship team to start to join me. I want to finish with that because my time is over, but I feel the fire of the Lord. I want to invite you, my friends, first honor the small beginnings. Oh, Dominic, I saw the Lord. That will be a wonderful song. If you can go with that, friends. First honor the small beginning. Like I've said, the Lord has started in one way. When I saw in this cloud, when I'm seeing this cloud, it's not going to be like this way. It's going to be a mixture of the things that has happened in the past, but also with fresh fragrances, fresh colors, fresh things that will be more stronger than ever. Sagan, so this revival is directly connected to the return of Jesus Christ and the Great Commission. My friend, Jesus is coming back very soon. We have to get ready. We can no more play. He can come just right now. But it's connected with this great commission where it's involved. It will involve all of us. And as a conclusion, and that's my last and probably the most important point. In 1 Kings 18 verse 30, Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. And all the people came near to him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been thrown down. I feel very strongly to urge you, to call you today as a church, as a person, as a family to build the altar for the Lord. What's the altar? It's a place of sacrifice. It's no more, 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 more. I want to eat. If I'm not happy, I go to another place. It's a place now to build the altar to your life, to this place, a place of sacrifice. An altar is a place where there is hungry, hunger and thirst for the Lord. An altar is a place of total devotion. This is the time, my friends, to give your whole life to the Lord, to serve Him. A place of worship as we sing this beautiful song. A place of obedience. A place of surrendering our will to His will. The Lord said in 1 Peter 5, 6, Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. It's an altar, an altar, sorry, is what the Lord is calling us, to build this altar, a place of consecration, but also a place of prayer. 
prayer praying not for the least of our needs but praying to see the Lord to see the center of all to see Jesus to see his face because we are hungry and thirsty of him and with the spirit and the body we say come Lord Jesus come Maranatha come tonight tonight today sorry I invite you to stand on your feet if you never gave your life to Jesus this is the day of salvation the Bible say call upon my name call upon the name of Jesus and you will be saved but I'm calling this morning especially all of you who heard this message and say yes Jean-Luc I want to do with my life that my life become an altar if that's your answer, I invite you to come in the front to give you life and to say, yes, I want that my life become an altar of consecration, an altar of prayer, an altar of devotion. I want to all those who heard and say, yes, I want to be part of this revival. I don't want just to watch. I want to be part of it. I want the fire of God starting to come to my own life, coming to my own family. That's the reason I want to give my life, my total life. And I want to build now this altar of consecration, of worship, of total devotion. A place where you say, yes, Lord Jesus, I don't want to play church, but I want revival. If you want revival in your life, come in the front and start to cry out to the Lord. It's no more time just to watch, to be a spectator, but it is a time to cry out to the Lord for revival. Lord God, as I release the best I can, I pray that you can touch all of us. We have been created for this time. We have been created to see this revival. And we don't want to stay away. We want to be part of that. That's for this morning we humble our heart and we say, Lord, I want to build in my life this altar of consecration. I want to remove all my sin. I want to live a holy life. But I want also to embrace the small beginnings, embrace the spirit of revival. And I ask you to pour out your spirit again upon my own life. Pour out your spirit upon my children. Pour out your spirit upon my family. Oh, I welcome the spirit of revival. Just tell him, Holy Spirit, I welcome this spirit of revival. And as they pray, Lord, I pray that you can touch them and release this fire of revival in Jesus' name. I pray and I, I bless this church. And I pray, Lord, as I saw these 50 cities, I know about it. I pray that revival will erupt in every place. But I pray that everyone on this place will be used as a channel to release this fire. I bless the team, I bless the leaders, the pastor, I bless Daniel and Elizabeth, all the pastors, I bless all the directors, protect them, spirit, soul and body. I finish with that. I'm telling you friends, many of you don't realize we are not going to a cruise to the Caribbean. We have entered a battle, a war that will rage. And those who are not full of the Holy Spirit, they will not survive. You need the Holy Spirit. If you want the fire of God in your life, you want to be full of Him, lift up your hands and cry out to the Lord. Lord, give us a new hunger, a new thirst. May we build this altar in our life, in our church, that the fire of God may come and may land at the place. This cloud is full of fire, but this fire will arrive and land to those who have built an altar. So if you want that, lift up your hands and start to cry out, cry out to the Lord. Cry out, please, not soaking. Cry out that this revival may come to you. Cry out, please. 
those who are at home i don't hear you but the lord hears you so that's the reason cry out cry out like these people these students in paris they are crying out coming from almost every regions of france they are crying out for revival so don't pass over connect to what the lord is doing that's for i bless you and i pray holy spirit to come upon everyone on this place with a new flame of fire in the name of jesus lift up your voice lift up your voice jesus done and we're going to dismiss but listen there's so many things that so many temptation to get our eyes off of Jesus even this week as all the things are swirling around us and the uncertainties and 
fear now more than ever now more than ever the church must keep their eyes on the one who is high he's lifted up he's lofty and his train fills the temple so church let's keep our eyes on jesus so before we leave this afternoon can we just do that just a just a minute more jesus we keep our eyes on you jesus come on let's just sing this to the lord we saw the lord he's seated finisher of all things Jesus I pray this week bless this congregation cover this church with your glory and Lord will be ever so sure to give you all the praise and all the honor Jesus we love you <laughs> Jesus we honor you let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus' name. We're going to continue to minister at these altars. Prayer team, if you're available, please minister with those that come. As we're leaving this afternoon, please remember Growth Track is in the cafeteria for those that would like to learn more about Nations Church and get involved. Don't forget about the prayer meeting tomorrow night at 6.30, McCoby. We also just want to acknowledge that um, the boot camp students that have been here in Orlando, this is actually their last Sunday before they leave for their three-week initiation in Africa. So tonight at the ministry center, we are having our prayer meeting where we are going to pray over them as they go into the mission field. So I encourage you to be there tonight at 6.30, and then tomorrow night, Monday night, we have prayer at Christ Church for Israel. So. Just so everybody knows, if you see a boot camp student, pray for them, love on them. You won't see them for three weeks because they're going to be in Africa working. God bless you guys. Thank you so much.